those of you who do not know me, my name is Cleet Stevens. I head uh, two organizations, Grace Outreach uh, Ministries and uh, Humanitarian Empowerment Fund. And I'm also a kingdom entrepreneur. The guys were asking me, what is a kingdom on, on, um, entrepreneur? Kingdom entrepreneur is a person that is focused on advancing the kingdom, not just in the business sector. And tell, and I've been a minister for many years. I never knew God would use me in the corporate, or he will use me in setting up businesses or helping Christian business men and women to transform their business into a kingdom business. And for God to use them in their place of influence, in the corporate, in their, in their workplace, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, to use that skill set. You know, God has given us all a five talents, two talents, or one talent. And whether we're ministers or we're in the workplace, we have a responsibility to have a kingdom cap on all the time. Amen. And the first scripture Sister will put up is Matthew 6 verse 33 in the Passion Translation. God has instructed us to advance the kingdom of God, to be used to seek his kingdom and his righteousness. We shared on the week weekend, you, you cannot put the kingdom first or advance the kingdom as a kingdom citizen if your right standing with God is not right. Your relationship with God, your communication with God, the cross is, what is this, vertical, ne? Yeah, horizontal, yeah. So this is the cross, vertical, my relationship with God. If I'm in right standing with God, then God can use me. And then I can reconcile people back to God. That's the cross. That's the new creation reality. But how do we do it? He's given you a gift set. He's given me a gift set. He's given us a talent. Are you using that talent to advance the kingdom? What does kingdom mean? Kingdom means influence and impact. So there we has placed us. We should be doing, we should be impacting and influencing. But now what religion and church structure has done to us, not this church, skin liberty, I want to, I'm only joking. <laughs> I guess we only communicated. <laughs> I'm only joking. Just, shh, I refrain those words. Please take it out of the, <laughs> what church structure or denomination or how religion and set of rules have done is that we come to a place of fellowship, and it's the fivefold's responsibility, the pastor or the evangelist or whatever, or the leadership or the missions team. It's their responsibility to minister and serve and whatever. And whatever I do in my personal capacity is for me and my family, me, I, and myself. So I put on a church cap on a Sunday, and a Monday to Saturday I live for myself. I give God 10% of my time, 10% of my money, maybe 90% is spent on me. That's what that what that's what what was the law. But Jesus came and said the righteous requirement to fulfill the law is love. So he said, I'm, I, I'm coming with the most and important commandment is to love God with all my heart, soul, and mind, and that's the law in the kingdom. And he says, When you love, all men will know you, my disciples. So if you will love in your workplace, you love in the ministry, you love at home, you serve, and you love and we share on, on that the weekend, then God can use you in a place of influence to shine the light in darkness. I thought there was darkness when we would do, be in the missions field or evangelism, but there's so much darkness in the workplace. There's so much darkness in business. Am I right? Wherever we go, whatever type of community, there's darkness, and you and I are called to be the light and the salt of the earth. And God has raised us up as an organization and as a ministry with a fantastic team that they have to influence and impact communities, cities, towns, not just here, even abroad. And men being and women being mobilized at their place of influence. Exa Let me explain it simpler to you. You either hand the foot, the leg, or the mouth. You have a part in the kingdom. You have a function in the body. And that function and that gift set and that talent has to be used where he has placed you in your place of responsibility. Like my brother Keith always says, in place of influence. If you are not being used by God as his hands and feet there, you will never be fulfilled. You know what, my brother and sister, you will only be existing. You will never live. 
debit order to debit order, problem to problem, month to month, pressure to pressure, deal to deal, promotion to promotion. You get that house, you get that car, you get everything. But when you look at the fruit of your life, you do not see souls. Because Jesus says, store up treasures in, not here on earth. Think of things, huh? not focus on things on earth, but why do we focus on things on this earth? Why are our minds consumed? Why can't we sleep at times? <laughs> why is there no joy? Why are we anxious? You understand what I'm saying? Because our priorities is not the kingdom priority. Jesus says in this statement, he says, seek above all, constantly seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. And then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly the what the things that preoccupy our minds in jesus's eyes is <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> amen because he owns the cattle on a thousand years he said you put my kingdom first and his righteousness uh, deuteronomy uh, uh, 28 verse 1 says when you obey the voice of the lord and heed to his commands the blessings will overtake you so the lesser things comes our way because the kingdom and right standing with God is first and then their blessings flows through us to others. Who's the potter and who's the clay? God is the? And we're the clay. But when we focus our minds on lesser things, we expect God to be the clay and we the potter. Because we want God, we want to mold God, and we have our lust and our needs and what we want. And he says, no, 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 no. Galatians 2 verse 2 and 20, when you get born again and say, it's no longer you that love. But it's Christ that loves in and through me. And I'm, you're talking to a church boy here. <laughs> I got saved in 1999. I was a loop and foul Christian till... 204. You know it's a loop and foul. Paraman coat. Sounds like low. <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about? But until God made the reality of what kingdom is over a journey of many years and what Jesus taught and preached, and specifically over this last five years, four years, God has taken me to another realm on what the kingdom of God means and what the red letter life means. I said to the men, I said, guys, if you want to be a priest, prophet, and king, if you want to imitate Christ, go and study Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And model your life after the red letter life. And you will see there, he preaches and teaches the kingdom of God. He came to come and establish it, and he instructed the early church, the disciples, the 120 in the upper room, and he instructed specific Paul, on the Damascus Road experience, to what? Take the gospel of the kingdom to the Gentiles. But we need to understand kingdom. I think the last time I was here, we done a workshop on the kingdom and stuff. Kingdom means this quickly. Influence, impact. In a kingdom, there is a constitution, which is the Bible. In a kingdom, there's ambassadors, there's citizens. We are the citizens. Amen. In a kingdom, there's a currency that's called faith without faith it is impossible to please god in the kingdom of god there's a culture the culture is servanthood for the son of man was was called to serve and not be served but when we get born again we feel god owes us everything not use other churches <laughs> that's how we get saved heal my marriage save me bless my business am i right protect my children give them the best education and God is a good God, is a father. He wants to bless us, but he would also like you to say, how can I use my gift and talent for your glory? I am available. What did Isaiah say? Here am I. Do you pray, do, do you, uh, do you pray that prayer often? <laughs> and say, Lord, I want your will to be done in my life. I want to be used by you. The shortest sermon Jesus preached was, follow me. He said, repent of your kingdom. Turn to your neighbor and say, repent of your kingdom. <laughs> and put God's kingdom first. 
Why am I telling you to say that? Because it's an often thing. The Apostle Paul says, I die daily to my will and my kingdom and my way. Amen. He decreases, we increase. We're in a war. I shared with the men over the weekend. We're in a war with what? Our will. It's our will against God's will. That's why you're in a fellowship and in a church where there's we co-laborers, we, 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 we're here as ambassadors of the kingdom of God, we're here to shine the light, we're here to keep one another in check. Because First John chapter 1 says, for those who walk in the light when they have fellowship, the blood of Jesus washes them, and we can watch and pray together. Amen. Because we watch and pray because the spirit is willing and the flesh is, the flesh pulls to what it wants to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Ouch. Who wants to put the kingdom first? Who wants to be used by God? Who wants your, 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 your talent that God has given you, your gift set that God has given you, must be used for the advancement of the kingdom? God is not interested. Let me explain something to you, to what you achieve and what you've attained in this life. People around you might be in place, but not God. Whether you have much or whether you have little, the Apostle Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And what did Paul do? Advance the kingdom. What did Peter do? Advance the kingdom. Talking New Testament saints, we're under the new covenant. Amen. That's why in the old covenant, we had to enter into God's presence through bulls and goats, the blood. But in the new covenant, we enter through what? The blood of Jesus we have direct access to say, Abba, Father. And why has he given us direct access? So you have authority in his name to go and fulfill the Great Commission. So when we think Great Commission, we think, hey, Zambia, Zimbabwe, <laughs> Europe. We know, no, 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 right here in your workplace, there where you are, is your Great Commission. Because commission, Great Commission means sent, sent where? Sent to where he's placed you. You see, George, you see your, your, your company, you see your business, you see your workplace, you see where he has placed you. That's where you must shine the light. That's where you have to stand for righteousness and truth. And that's where you need to place the kingdom of God first. But the lesser things that's not important to God, the stuff consumes us. Because Jesus said something, when I come back to the earth, will I find faith? Tribulation, judgment, everything is going to burn. Everything will be gone. Amen. But faith that worketh through love. Our fruit is what is going to stand before God. Not our treasures on earth. There's things like the soul winner's crown we will receive. Crown of righteousness. Amen. We'll be getting rewards and treasures when we get to heaven. And you know when God gives us that, you know what happens? We give it back to God. Because he gets all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Look at your hands. Look at your feet, your mouth. God wants to use you. But how can he use you to influence and impact? When you're in right standing with God. We were sharing on the weekend, the most difficult thing for a Christian is to spend time alone with God. You know why? The thought life. It goes, it runs. It's difficult to be still. And know he is God. This morning when I was preparing early hours, you know how we are as Pentecostals. Costals. Ratatata. Ah, tongues. Oh, praying. Oh, give me. Lord, let may God move. He said, be still. For half an hour, I just kept quiet. I said, Lord, now speak to me. And I had my notes. I had everything prepared. And he said, you spent hours in the week for the weekend. He said, just be still. I want to speak now. You're speaking a lot. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that us? God must know what you need, Matthew 6, even before you pray. <laughs> Isn't it? Do you, does your, do you know you must provide for your child? Isn't it? You, need, you know you need to pray and you need, you need to protect and you need to... You know, isn't it? He's then sitting at the right hand of the Father praying for us. And the Holy Spirit is there guiding our steps. <laughs> He wants you to, and me, he wants us to be preoccupied with his stuff. But 
most of our time, I'm busy with a lot of young people and youth. Their time is spent at school or in, at college or university or whatever. Our time is spent in the workplace. That's why the workplace or where you spend your time is where you need to be, have the influence as a kingdom citizen. And how do you show your fruit? What's the fruit that God wants to see at your workplace? Is the souls that's getting saved, getting discipled, the poor and the needy. Jesus comes out of the wilderness. We've done temptation with the men. He comes out of the wilderness. He's tempted three times by Satan. And he comes in his first statement. He takes out the, the scroll of Isaiah 61 and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to set captives free. This is our mandate. Recovery of sight to the blind. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. He's placed this fireman there, not just to save them out of the fire, but to save them out of the fire of hell. Amen. He's, you, you are there as a mechanic, not just to fix cars, you're there to fix people. <laughs> But your righteousness has to be in order with God in order for Rikis to know how God, what God wants to you and how God wants to use him in his gift set. But you see, the kingdom of this world has us preoccupied. <sighs> and we're chasing. <laughs> and God said to me, Cleet, you busy too much. I I was very busy when COVID hit. My whole itinerary was fully booked. Because God uses me in the gift of healings, miracles, and stuff like that. In the irrevocable gift. But when COVID hit, he said, be still. Stop running around and flying around. I want, you, I want to use you in the kingdom, in the place of influence. And activate in men and women how their gift set. Imagine you go to the fireplace, you're so busy there. Emil, and God, God is you are shining the light there in darkness. The people you are serving upon and saving out of fires. The guys that's being discipled and shared. There's a prayer meeting going on there. The Holy Spirit is ministering in and through you. This one is getting saved. Now you want to go to work. <laughs> Amen. You want to go to work because you're pleasing the Father. You want to go to work. You don't mind pushing in the hours, pushing the deadlines. Amen. Because you know there's fruit coming out. But you need to hear the voice of the Lord. John 10 is another very important scripture. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus comes to give life in abundance. My sheep hear my voice. You know what the devil steals? You hearing God's voice. That's all. And doing what God tells you to do. Let's go to Luke 8. I'm not getting to nothing. Is this okay if I minister like this? Please, if the scriptures that I'm quoting, I'm a pastor or a minister, so you must know it's from the Bible, okay? <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm sure you must have heard it many a times. Well, let's go to Luke 8, verse 4 to 13. Who wants to be used in the kingdom? I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for you that God will activate in you, like in Timothy's. In Timothy it says, we're going to lay hands on you so the gift that is within you will be activated. Amen. You, you, God is going to use you. Do you know what a, a minister means? He says we've all been called for the ministry of reconciliation. Under the new covenant, we're all called to be ministers. Amen. You are called to be a minister of reconciliation. God has called you as an ambassador to reconcile people back to God. Where? They were your place of influence. The first day when I met Keith and we started fellowshipping, so many times he said, place of influence. Place of responsibility. God has given to us because God knows why he placed you there. God knows why he placed you here in this church and in this city and in this town so you can be used by you. My brother and my sister, you will never be fulfilled. If you're looking for recognition and acceptance and a, play and a feel of fulfillment in the system and the kingdom of this world, never. Do you know why? It's not our home. 
Peter says, we're passing through. This is not our home. We're eternal beings. Amen. That's why our sweet spot is when we put the kingdom first. Okay. And when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. Those who are taking notes, that seed and that sowed is the word of God. Amen. And it was trampled down and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on the rock and some as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Verse 7. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and it choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he said these things, he cried, say cried. He who has ears, hear, let him hear. Next. Then his disciples asked him, saying, what does this parable mean? And he said, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. See, the kingdom of God is a mystery. If you read in Matthew 30, you'll see the kingdom of God is like a treasure. The kingdom of God is like a pearl. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. If for you to understand the message of the kingdom or your function in the kingdom, how God is going to use you, it's not going to be put on a silver platter. You're going to have to seek and you have to find. You have to knock and it will be open. Amen. It's a mystery. But to the rest of but but to the rest it's a given in parables that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not hear. It's either you're gonna hear this morning or you're not gonna hear. Because the word of God, the seed is being sown here today. Keith and whoever else ministers is showing the seed, God's word. On but on what ground is it falling? Next. Now the parables is this. The seed is the word of? Amen. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes the word out of their hearts. So you're excited now. Yo, guys on the weekend, we fire up. Ah, more, the devil loop. Ah, and by the work, I break iemand to offend you. Or to hurt you. <laughs> and Adam nature stands up again. <laughs> as if we're back. Amen. But the ones on the rock are those who when they hear receive the word with joy. And these have no root. Who believe for a while. And in time of temptation. They fall away. Say temptation. When you are tempted, you don't sin. But when you give in to temptation, you sin. So we don't have time this morning. But I'll, if you're going to go to a life group, if it's okay with Keith, what we've done on the weekend, I will give that, that, those scriptures on we we done how Eve and Adam fell into temptation. And how Jesus never fell into temptation in the wilderness. That's what we've done. And if, if Eve and Adam fell into temptation, the temptation of pride to know more than God. Who are we? <laughs> you have never arrived. Amen. So he says that, that temptation, he throws those carrots in front of us. And the three temptations is this. In the life of Adam and Eve and in the Jesus in the wilderness, the lust of the flesh, the crave of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. The cravings for these things. It's got nothing to do with the devil. Because that we shared it, the devil's work is he destroyed. He prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking we can devour. But he's toothless. We give him power and we give him authority when we yield to the temptations. And the loss. Because he's given us the power to resist. Amen. But when you understand who you are in Christ, and your function in the kingdom, and your place of influence. Now you can see God, you can pray, you can ask, you can knock, because you're a soldier. 
The key scripture we done in the beginning was, you and I have been enlisted in God's army as soldiers. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And a soldier is, the soldier is also here. Amen. <laughs> we are in a war. Why do you put the armor on? To go to battle. Why must you take down high imaginations and thoughts? Because we know battle. But it makes the, the battle so, and the war so much victorious when you know whose you are. <laughs> when you know your identity, and you know, hey, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above. I'm a conqueror and I'm overcomer. Because why? You have yielded to the call of God, the purpose of God, and the destiny of God. You're fulfilling your function in the kingdom of God. Okay. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out uh, and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. So, so the first one, before we go into the last seed, the first one, you hear the word, the devil comes, he steals it. The second one, temptation. The third one, the lures of riches, of wealth. Carrots, this promotion comes, that deal comes, this contract comes, but that thing is actually taking you away from God. The bank account is flourishing, and you became the, you, you operating, but you are a success in the world, but you are failure in the kingdom. Because Jesus just measures your success by fruit. He, but if he's placed you in a place of influence and you use that for the glory of God and you humble yourself because kingdom principles is different. So he says, these are the three seeds that fall. But the, the fourth one is what I want to focus on. Because the first three, we've, we've seen the case, the case of this life. Oh, where's my child going to end up? How are we going to do this? Oh, oh, this family matter, my mother-in-law, oh, this, 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 oh, my boss, oh, oh, who knows? And his anxiety, and his depression, and his this. Because the cares, because you're not fulfilled in your function in the kingdom. And we become fruitless. This is what we want to focus on. Next one. But the ones that fell on the good ground <laughs> are those who have heard the word and with a noble and good heart keep it and bear fruit with patience. We mustn't be hearers of the word and talkers of the word, but be. You see, when you're in right standing, God speaks to you. And he gives you an instruction. <laughs> and he says, I want you to do this and do that. Then our knees start shaking. <laughs> How can I do this, Lord? Yeah, no. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. It must shake you. <laughs> the vision or the instruction he has given you, amen. bang mark. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be doing it out of your own strength. Oh, him who has ears hear what the Spirit is saying this morning. You understand? God instructs you in the secret place of the Most High to give you a mandate. And that mandate that he gives you will always be connected to the kingdom and to God's people. You'll never come out of there and you be the main person. Are you, are you some of the visionary of the church? Are you some of the visionary and you this prophetess and prophet and you the main hour and you feel entitled? When you come out of when you meet with God, you come humbly out. You come as a servant. God has given you instruction. And you say, Lord, speak to the rest of the body so we can connect. We spoke about one heart, one mind, one purpose. Ephesians 4 verse 1 says, Paul says, I beg you to walk worthy of your calling and be lowliness in mind. God is looking for servants to come together. He's the king and we the citizens. And we come together, we spoke about the cost that it counts, that you have to count to be used in the kingdom. So it says there, I love it, having heard the word, a noble and good art. There's something I took a photo on this morning, which was very profound, that just explains that. Listen to this. The footpath, the wayside people, like 
of the religious leaders refused to believe God's word. Rocky Sway people, like many in the crowds who follow Jesus, believe his message, but never get around to doing anything about it. The thorny ground where the seed fell, people overcome by worries and the lure of materialism, leave no room for in their lives for God. Because Jesus said, you, either you're going to serve mammon or God. You can't have two masters. So contradicting to the prosperity gospel. Eh? The, the thorny people overcome by cares, worries, materialism. Good soil people, listen to this. In contrast to the other groups, follow Jesus no matter what the cost. Which type of soil are you? And I can be producing good fruit now. Amen. I can be in good soil. But the minute I allow temptation and I yield to it, what happens? Exactly. Who I allow the cares and the worries of this life. Do you see, that's why we always need a cross in our lives. We always need to be preaching Christ crucified. The cross in me and the world behind me, no turning back. You see why you can never arrive in the kingdom of God, why he always stays the king of the kingdom. Because we need him. When Eve sinned and fell into temptation, wanted to know more than God, the, the dependence of God went. No more dependent on God. That's why she covered, they covered themselves. When Christ overcame the temptation, what? He gave us direct access to God. But he says, in order to stay free, where the sun sets free is, but in order to stay free, we have to, in Matthew it says, produce 30, 60, or 100 fold fruit. You know why we must be producing fruit? Where he has placed us so he can prune us. <laughs> For more fruit. God will allow things to happen in our lives. Amen. Sometimes it's the devil that steals like with Job. Or sometimes God will allow certain circumstances and situations to come our way. You know why he wants to see where your trust is. Are you trusting in man or are you trusting in God? Jeremiah 17 says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. And does not put his trust in the arm of flesh. And cursed is the man who puts his trust. In the arm of flesh. God wants first place in our lives. He wants to control. He wants us to produce fruit. And we've learned these scriptures before. I've preached it many times. I've heard. I've been all over. And I said, Lord, but how can you continuously produce fruit? When you know your function in the kingdom. Your place of influence. Condemnation can't get hold of you. Because there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. But why is condemnation, guilt, still ruling and so prominent in the church? Why do we still feel unworthy, insecure, offense? You hear what I'm trying to say? Because we, at times we forget whose we are and what he has done for us but when my hand is put to the plow and I'm single minded and I know this is what the Lord has called me I'm not worried about the distractions if you offend me I pray for you if you become my enemy I love you <laughs> if you persecute me I pray for you to be enough for a day or two because I lay down my life to serve and to love you it's not nice you understand but because I know who I am and I have a mission I can bless those who curse me but when I don't know whose I am, those type of things will hurt me. Take me away from church. <laughs> Take me away from fellowship. Become hard because unconsciously we trust in man to do and to provide for us. But I said to Keith on Thursday, we must trust in God to work through man. There's a big difference. But we 
don't want to suffer persecution. We don't want to suffer for his namesake. We just want God to bless us. <laughs> and everything might just go well. Amen. We will experience pain, heartache, sickness, disease. We will experience betrayal, false accusation. Because, can you put on Philippians 3 verse 10, please, sister? Listen to the scripture. We will experience these things, and we will always, and we will always, and we will also experience, experience blessings. But it doesn't mean if I'm not blessed materialistically, God is not doesn't love me. God is not conditional; He's sovereign. All right, who wants to know God? Hey, thank you for the two people that I may know Him <laughs> and the power of His resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Paul wanted to know God, not to use God, but to love God. So at times when many Christians get saved is what I can get from God. Here he says, to know you, I, I know. I've experienced the power of the resurrection. I've experienced the anointing. I've seen God move. I've seen the power of God. We've seen it. For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I've experienced the resurrection power. I've experienced your blessing. I've seen the doors that you've opened. I've seen your favor. I've seen your hand. I've seen your grace. I've seen your mercy. But alongside that, I also have to suffer. Amen, please. Say amen for that. <laughs> And you know, our, our, our ultimate suffering is showed in the previous verses, which is very important. My sister, just go from verse 4, I think, if I'm correct. This is how we suffer. The, next, the previous verse, verse 3. Yeah. For we are the circumcision. Look to your neighbor. Say you are the circumcision. The circumcised. You know what that means? Circumcise that heart. Compassionate, merciful, gracious, broken heart. What breaks God's heart must break your heart. That's why there's no place for racism, partiality, discrimination, and those type of things in the kingdom of God. He says, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the... You see the craving of what we see, our possessions, all those things. He says, I cannot have confidence in that. Next. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. So now he's bragging a bit. <laughs> he's bragging a bit and he says, this is what I've accomplished. Okay. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law and a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss to Christ. Yes, indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. I heard the guys yesterday and so forth, self-centeredness, righteousness, uh, my own righteousness, pride. I heard the guys saying, as I was walking past them, he says there, my own righteousness, which is from the law. That's your own effort. But what which is, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. So you cannot know Christ intimately if what you've achieved and who you are is still on the threshold. You can only start knowing Christ. That's why when you get born again and you get saved, 
That's what, you, what you've become or what you've achieved or what you've not achieved or whatever, or you were broken or whatever, heartache, pain, success, whatever you've had before Christ has to be washed by the power of the blood of Jesus and then you become a new creation. In 2 Corinthians 5 says, it says that then you no longer live for yourself, you start living for Him. And when I, when I, when I, when I say, Lord, it's all rubbish. Whatever I achieved, whatever I've become and not become, whatever I struggled with, my identity crisis, the abuse I went through, the hurt, the pain I went through, it's all under the blood of Jesus. And now, it's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that lives in and through me. And now, I want to know you in the power of your resurrection and in the fellowship of my sufferings. I've experienced your resurrection because I was dead in my sins. And like Ricky said, by grace, I have been saved. I've never earned it. I'm here by your grace. Here am I, Lord. Abba, use me. You see, the way we've entered and how we got born again is our foundation, is of very utmost importance. Some, some of us has to go back and say, Lord, I got saved for the wrong motive. I never got saved to know you. I got saved for what I can get from you. We wreck that foundation and we, and we place the cross and the kingdom and the king, which is the rock, as our foundation. And you will see God use you because you will know it's not by might, it's not by power. But it's by His Holy Spirit, it's by His grace you've been saved. And you're like a child before God. Amen. And those of you that are living crucified lives, and those of you that are being used by God, and those of you, this is an encouraged work, word to continue. Don't give up. It's worth it. And God is going to release a fresh anointing upon you so He can use you more. Who wants to know Christ? You need to do introspection, examine yourself, and go into the secret place and say, Lord, what is not of you? Burn it with the Holy Spirit and fire. And what is of you? Ignite. <laughs> Set the fear. <laughs> Set the fear after me. Amen. You, I want to be used by you, Lord. And I'm talking to you something that I've experienced. Because I was there on the pulpit, I was there as a minister, I was there on the big stage, I was there all over, but, I, but, but it was the gifts. And there was an ele ele uh, element of cleat and what God does through me that was on the forefront. And that's why we're on a journey with God, amen. We're on a journey. So this type of message is a type of message that must fall on good ground. So you can decrease more. Hi. <laughs> and Christ must increase. That's one or two scriptures that we're going to minister. Are you with me? Kijk net langs on your slava mens now. There was a few people that was not enough. That's why I... That's why I... Amen. Who's excited? Okay, good. Thank you, sister. <laughs> Thank you. Um, sister, go to uh, John 18, verse 36. John 18, verse 36. And then after that, Acts 9. I'll tell you that. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, my servants would fight so that I should be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. I came. He came as, as, an inst as the son of God to come and establish and he's given us the instruction 
to advance the kingdom with the help of the Holy Spirit. That's why he said it's better if I go away. Because the person that has the keys of the kingdom, that they can accelerate the kingdom ministry is the Holy Spirit. Through you and through me. That's why the gospel is there to go to the Gentiles, which I'll show you now in Paul's life. So Acts 9 verse 3 to 6 and verse 15 to 16. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is, he, it is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And then just go to verse 15 and 16. But the Lord said to him, go, for it is, that's to Ananias. Jesus is telling Ananias, go to Paul, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. To know him in the power of his resurrection. Because here's Paul, a murderer of Christians. He had to hear the voice of Jesus to catch his attention. Shared with the guys over the weekend, we have one big problem as born again believers. And I was there, and at times I also step in there. Is that we, we, the written word, we'll take and read and apply and take it out of context and we'll quote and we'll declare, but we've, we, we, we very rarely hear the witness of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the rhema word. This is the logos word. What transformed and changed? Paul. The spoken word. Boom. <laughs> it's like, sure. And what took Ananias to Paul? Because <laughs> he, when he heard this, I'm a this man. This man is a murderer. <laughs> I can't. This is not but the spoken word. So we see why our right standing with God is important. We need to be right standing. We need to be in fellowship with God. All the distractions away so you can hear his voice. And when you hear his voice and you get the spoken word or you get the witness in your spirit, then you know what you do. Then you take the written word. As scripture backing to enforce. Because when you're going to get the kingdom word, Forgive, love, serve, whatever it is. You need the scriptures, which is the sword of the spirit, to enable you to see what God has instructed you to do to come to pass. Because when we're not rooted in the, the word and we don't have the understanding of the word, we won't be able to foresee and see through because you need the sword of the spirit. You need the word of God. You have the armor, but you need the word. You need to declare and you need to decree. But why, why will you endure suffering, pain, heartache? Why, why will you endure uh, 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 and be used by God to fulfill your tasks and mission? Because you've got a spoken word and what God has spoken to you is here and amen. Every word that proceeds from the uh, uh, mouth of God, the heart of God. Don't be here as a word and be talking. You take that word and you run with it. And that's why at times you don't speak to a lot of people what God has spoken to you. Because people come with doubt. <laughs> they don't mean it. Amen. They come and they speak and you're like, yeah, but they take no more. You hear know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to water that word with prayer. And you have to water it with the scriptures. And be patient for God to bring it to pass. But you need to be in tune with God in order to hear what God says. So he says, this is at the beginning of his life. He hears the voice. Now, sister, go to X. X, listen to this. The end of his life, 28. Verse 23 to 24. And then 28 to 31. This is the beginning of his walk with God. 
And now we come to the end of his walk. So when they had, uh, when they had appointed him a day, many came to him, and he is lodging to him. He explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets from the morning till the evening. What did he do? Share on the kingdom. And some were persuaded by the, by the things which were spoken, and some disbelieved. Next. So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul, and he said one word, the Holy, spoken, the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophets to our fathers, saying, go to this people and say, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. Let's go to verse 28 to 31, please, sister. Therefore, it will be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. And when they had said these things, the Jews departed and had a great dispute amongst them. Then Paul dwelt a whole two years in his own rented house, and received them all who came to him. What did he do day and night for two years? Sharing what? The kingdom of God. At the beginning of his life, he hears the voice. And his, the mercy and grace is sufficient for him. And he says, you know what? I was a murderer. I was lost. I was undone, I was directionless, I was on my way to the pit of hell, but the grace of God and the mercy of God saved me. And he says, whatever I have to do, he was stoned, he was whipped, he was shipwrecked. Whatever, I ta- whatever it takes for me to, to uh, spread the kingdom and demonstrate the gospel, I will do because by grace he has, he has been saved. And that's our attitude. Our attitude is an attitude of desperation. Where would I have been if Jesus didn't love me? Where would I have been if Jesus didn't care? Where would I have been if he never had sacrificed his life? Oh, I'm glad. That's the attitude we should be having of desperation by the westernized gospel, the religious and the the denominations and all these things that divides us as kingdom citizens, as, as, as made us focus and believe that we are entitled when we're born again. And God is a magic wand that he has to jump to my tune. And he has to approve and bless what my plans are. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Say not my plans. Your His plan he has for you to prosper, not to harm you. His will and his way. Amen. This might not be a popular message, but this is the message. This is the central message that Jesus preached and lived. And we were saved, and here the Apostle Paul is the, he is the forefather of our foundation father of the gospel that came to the Gentiles. And you see how the, when he came with his gospel, the, even the Apostle said, no, we have to send you out. <laughs> He's still like any, because the gospel was that time only for the Jews. This is our foundation as the Gentiles. Not your will, oh Lord, my will. Whatever I become, whatever, I, whatever I'm going to do is for your glory. Whoever I marry has to be a kingdom wife or a kingdom husband. Has to be somebody that loves you with all their heart. I'm not marrying because of how successful they are or what we can become or what we can accumulate and wealth and stuff because that success is nonsense and rubbish in God's eyes if it's not rooted and grounded in the kingdom. We teach and raise our children to be independent, not to ask anybody anything. And we push them into education 
and all the distinctions and stuff, but they don't even know how to lead somebody to the Lord. They don't even know how to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. They don't even know how to guide and to pray for the needs because you spend hours and hours indoctrinating them with the system of this world. But thank God if they become successful accountants or whatever the case may be. But they have to know I'm becoming this because God is sending me into this place of influence. And he's giving me this degree. And he's giving me this success so I can be used by him. But as we as parents, are we engraving that into them? This is not for your glory, it's not for your pension, it's not, not for your success. This, you're doing this because God wants to use you, my child. And how are they going to know that? We need to show them. God is not a tooth fairy <laughs> and a magic wand that we can just whoo, investment. I love my wife, I have two beautiful kids. If I don't spend time with her and my kids, I can say how much I love them. Do you love God? And let's increase our prayer time like never before in our fellowship. I haven't arrived. I'm faultless. I'm fault. I'm faulty. Sorry. (laughs) I'm faulty here where I am. I'm a work in progress. It's operating on me. You hear what I'm trying to say, my brother and my sister? But there's one thing I know. I'm not looking back. I'm looking toward what he has for me, and that is to be a, a kingdom citizen. Acts 1, verse 1 to 3. I got a toegemaak now. Wa? The former account I made of the Ophelus, of all that Jesus began both to do and so now he's in, he's in his resurrected body. Some disciples seen him walking through the wall. He had a fish braai. <laughs> Here's the braai when he restored Peter back to Christ. What did Peter do? Denied him. Asked him three times, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? I'm asking you, do you love God? Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Then feed his sheep. Take care of his lambs. They were his place you in your place of influence. If you really love him, give him your hands and your feet and you say, Lord, your will be done. Your kingdom come. I surrender. And the minute Peter done that, he spoke it. But when in the upper room he had to stand and he declared, and he declared the first message, of the gospel of the kingdom, the message of the cross, 3,000 were saved. The same man that doubted, similar to Paul. See, God uses and he qualifies the unqualified. Those who humble themselves, God will use. So, through the Holy Spirit, until the day which he was taken up, that's when he ascended, he through the Holy Spirit and his given commands to his apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God for how many days teaching again teaching them you must remember he gave them the parables of the kingdom (laughs) for three years he was teaching them, and, but they couldn't understand. Because when he, was persec- when, when he died on the cross, when, they, when he was persecuted, they, they ran. It never, it never took root. The seed that he sowed, the word that he sowed amongst them, we fell onto hard ground, thorny ground. That again, in his resurrected body, he had to sit with them again. For 40 days, we've heard things, but we've never applied it. God's word has been planted. God has been warning us. He's been enlightening us. But we don't, not doing anything. And here we are once again. <laughs> and Keith has been sharing with me on what he's been preaching and ministering to you. It's so in line. Am I correct? <laughs> because God, we are messengers sent by God to deliver the underadulterated, 
uncompromising word. So the church can be mobilized to go in Judea, Jerusalem, all the ends of the earth. Our communities is waiting for us. People are waiting for us as the church to go and shine the light in darkness. They're waiting for you in your workplace, but you need to be prayed up. You need to walk in with anointing. You need to walk in with power. He sees someone in that swanee. God has used me from standing in the pulpit to be sitting amongst Muslims, Jews, atheists. I come in there, I don't share one scripture. I come prayed up. And that, they just start confessing. <laughs> they just start repenting. Say, Klee, can you pray? Can you help? Because, you know, when you, because with our humanitarian organization, we got a lot of corporates. And if you do due diligence on what you do, then obviously if you Google my name, you'll see. <laughs> I'm a minister with Grace Outreach Ministries. And it's only, and you know, in the corporate space, you can't preach and you can't mention Christ or any religion. So who's opening up the doors for us? But I don't need to go and convict them and tell them, I just keep quiet, I go pray it up. And one guy was an atheist, German guy. Two, three years, he, when he met us, he said, I don't need anything about God. Two, three years, we're working, we're doing projects, we're building schools, this, that, 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 that. One day, I'm, I come out of a two, three-day fast. He comes with me to a project. There were my old house when we lived, Ricky Senem were there. I wrote when I was nine years old, or eight years old, plead forever, Jesus loves you. You know, when you're a kid, you write. And there's... Short German guy stands and he opens up and he, and he starts crying. I said, Reina, what's going on? He says, no, I've never felt compassion like this and love like this. What you have done here in this home, because we've got a community house for, since 1986. Thousands have been saved, changed, delivered, healed from there. He says, I've never experienced compassion like this. I can't, I don't understand what is going on. <laughs> We get home, he goes to my wife. My wife has a craft business, arts and craft. She says, he goes to her secretly, he says, can you put this on a pallet for Cleet? And when I come back to South Africa, I want to give him as a gift for his birthday. So that photo he took, Cleet forever, God loves you, and he put it on this thing. So I pick him up in Santon at his hotel. We take him to the projects. This is now two months later, he comes back. My wife gives him this thing. He, gives, he said, here's a gift, it's wrapped. I said, what's going on? Get home, I drop him, I open up the thing. I said, oh, look at this guy. My wife, I said, you kept a good secret. Ne? <laughs> you kept a good secret. Hey, I found him, I said, Reina, thank you, man. He says these words, you would think I'm a pastor or a minister. The way I cried when I got to Germany. And I see now the orphans and the widows and the poor and the needy has been taken care of through you. And the testimony of your mom then I had the opportunity after two years. I said, Reina, what can I pray for you for? He said, I have no relationship with my son for 10 years. I would like to be reconciled with my son. We prayed. It's 2019. Guess what God done in the next two, three months? He phones me. He says, me and my son are coming to South Africa. I want him to meet you and to see not one scripture, my sister. And my brother. Sometimes we have to just shine the light. Sometimes we have to share the word. You understand what I'm saying? Like we're doing now. We the church. <laughs> this word must rebuke us. Amen. It must correct us. It must encourage us. It must inspire us. Amen. But those out there. They don't have the knowledge of the word. They need you to be the light in the word. And God taking me from the pulpit to be, um, being amongst these people. And I'm with says, Bam, we look for me. Not to quote the scripture. <laughs> it was, but no more now. You hear what I'm trying to say? Because I understand. First John says, no one has seen God, but it's the love of God expressed through you that draws people to Christ. All men will know you, my disciples, when you love one another. But if they're seeing you fighting and you arguing and you offended, and you bitter, <laughs> and you jealous at work, <laughs> at the place, and you skatarach. <laughs> I'm not saying we don't have off days. Amen? 
We all have off days. But in general, people must know you're consistent in your walk with God because you're walking with the Holy Spirit. Who wants to be used by God? Who wants God to show them in their place of influence and responsibility? And I'm just endorsing what my brother in the church stands for. I'm just here to agree with him because I know it's his art and I know it's the mission and the vision of this church. I see what Mark is doing and stuff. I see, I see God is stirring up something, but it's the next thing and the new thing. Okay, God has already started. <laughs> Amen. But when we understand why I have to avail myself, because this is for me. And I have to work out my own salvation with. This is why people fall away from the kingdom. This is why people fall back into sin. Think about it. This is why we fell back into sin. Sin and we go like this. See so. This is why people don't want to give their hearts to Christ. Amen. Let's pray.